How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. A little bit of oud goose time in the form of, I'm going to say, three Fontenen. Because I know people like to say, Jared Fontenen, and all that kind of shit. But I'm, I don't know. I'm no dude. I'm from Jersey. We say three. That's a three. Fontenen, it's their oud goose. Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to give this a whirl. I haven't reviewed it yet. I've had it before. But I stumbled upon this at a local bottle shop to me. Uh, I was across the border in Pennsylvania. They tend to have stuff like this from time to time. And 11 bucks off a shelf. All day, son. Um, and the fact that this is the 30th of March of 2019. And this sucker is exactly a year old. So that kind of tickles me pink. Um, what else does it say in this bottle? It says... Three Fontenin, it is their Oud Goose is a blend of one, two, and three-year-old Lambics. Traditional Lambic, or Lambic, as people like to say, is cultural heritage rooted in the Zen Valley. Bottle fermented, unfiltered, and unpasteurized. Open carefully. Yeah. Done and done. Best before, so they give you, what, a 20-year uh, best before on this. There you go. Uh, Label-wise, it's fucking fantastic. It, it, it hits all the marks. It's... It's... Simple, but classic. Screen printed, which is always a bonus for me. And uh, yeah, it's a green bottle. What do you want? I don't think I jostled this around too much. Hopefully I didn't. But we're going to give it a nice little pour. And then be done with her. So as you can see there, classic styling on the label. What you'd expect. From not just uh, Trey uh, Fontenay, but uh, uh, you know Belgian breweries in general. You know, beautiful green bottle and a beautiful beer to match. To be perfectly honest with you, you look at that thing. It looks like to me like nectarine peach juice. Um, it's got a kind of soft, bubbly, effervescent, almost like a, a little bit beefed up above a uh, champagne kind of carbonation to it. And she's got that soft taste to her. I mean, she just looks pretty, inviting. That carbonation just screaming out to you. Want to be drank? Want to be? So, let's get to that portion of the show. I'm going to give it an old sniffy poo first, though. This is, to me... I always get a soft sulfur vibe. On a lot of, like, old school, like, Sin Valley, like, Lambics. Or Gooses, I should say. Um, it, it's soft sulfur vibe, but it, it's a positive, it's not a negative thing. There's a definitely ripe... There's almost a savory component to it. And I think that's part of that kind of, like, sulfur vibe. And there's this rich kind of orchard. And I say generic orchard. I'm usually talking stone fruit, peachy, stuff like that. Not that it's actually in the fruit, but it's almost like an orchard kind of vibe you get from it. A soft sweetness, but it's got this rich maltiness, a soft smokiness to it. There's a lot of different things going on in this beer. Yeah, I mean, she smells like a meal in a way that it, it, it has a richness and density to it. And like I said, that added kind of dollop of a soft kind of savory component just kind of adds that kind of meal kind of um, uh, vibe that it's giving off. It's just super rich. Uh, it's not really all that funky. It, it, there's a funk. There's a dirt funk, like an earth terraforma funk to it. Not necessarily like a hay funky, dirty, barnyardy thing that everybody talks about. It's more of a dirty kind of earthy funkiness um, that's more kind of like very gentle, um, closer to neutral than explosive. Yeah. She smells just chuggable, drinkable. Let's just dive in. Cheers. So I talk a lot. This is one of my higher praises that I give beers, especially funky wild beers. Um, I always talk about, well, I don't always talk about it. When I get it, I talk about it, which is few and far between. This, I believe, and I don't know the science behind it, so I always go, I believe, this kind of pH balance that is in tune with the human body, that's where this sits. It has aggressive taste to it. The carbonation is probably a little bit too heavy for me. I feel like that's holding some of the flavor back. It does have that soft, smoky, rich, subtle savoriness that leans towards that orchard, but it's a little bit more kind of over-ripened, but not super sweet and kind of fruit. I wouldn't go over-ripened, like 
pick too early and let it mature off the vine to where it has it didn't get as deep flavor wise but it's still there but again we're just talking about kind of blends of old lambic here that sulfur thing that was there in the nose um that savory portion of the show is still there but that that uh, sulfur thing is blown off it's not even in there at all so um that's a positive to it and it just has that exact level of acidity and ph balance like i said to make it feel like it's it's supposed to be inside of you that is the creepiest wait a minute is that the creepiest thing i've ever said in a youtube video i probably said that before so it's probably up there with one of the creepiest things is it the best beer i've ever had in my life no i don't think so there's a better question to ask myself is it the best beer that i've had, that i can have right now i think so it might be a little bit too kind of cryptic and a little bit too whatever for people out there but this is the beer you know what's that kind of thing people say to make people laugh it's um, not the hero you wanted but the hero you needed it's not the beer I wanted it's the beer i needed um it's just drinking so pleasant it's so well made and so in tune like i said uh, ph wise with at least my body to the point where it makes sense to drink it combine that with the fact that it's a really well done beer i'm not quite sure i could have a better beer at this moment but i'm i, I know i've had better beers i know that is really kind of just like what the fuck are you talking about dude but it makes sense in my brain so it's coming out of the face hole um yeah it's tasty it pretty much follows exactly the nose you're getting now is kind of rich fruited orchard vibes but more kind of from a yeast aspect as opposed to an added fruit aspect carbonation is probably a little bit too high that's probably the biggest knock i would give it but it has this rich kind of balance between its sweetness its richness and this little subtle, subtle savory component to it it's it, it has a it's tart enough i don't even want to go acidic enough tart enough to give me a pop uh, uh, and let me know i'm drinking something that isn't outside of that realm but not nearly enough to get me in trouble heartburn wise um just super drinkable Super tasty. Just a pleasure to drink. Is it one of the better Oud Goos I've had in a while? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is up there. I can't remember having a better one as of late because, like I said, in this moment right down, this works for me. Vegan availability is 11 bucks, 12 bucks off a shelf in PA all day. All day with that. And leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like well made beer, if you like sour tart, funky beers, even though, like I said, it's not overly funky. It has that earthy component to it. And if you like you like a little bit of tartness in your life and you like a well-made beer, it's going to do you proper. Uh, there's a lot of breweries in the United States that are making very big strides and headway in a whole lot of beers like this. But there's a reason why they've been making these beers for this long and this well for this long. And, and it shows in this beer. So if you like beer, you'll like this beer. There you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the home podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little um, good goose right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>